Now, many historians argue that debate was a tipping point which helped put Kennedy in the White House. To give you some context, Nixon had been ill for a number of weeks before the event and came to the debate having lost weight and looking both pale and fatigued. Yet when he was offered makeup, he refused, thinking to wear makeup would be in some way effeminate. Kennedy had no such qualms, plus was already the picture of health with a deep suntan. Of course, no uh, subsequent presidential candidate has embraced makeup as thoroughly as the Donald. <laughs> now back to the Kennedy and Nixon race. Now realizing the importance of image, JFK had already got one over on Nixon by refusing to wear an overcoat during uh, the campaign, even though it took place uh, during a particularly bitter cold winter. Now, Nixon, of course, had always worn the overcoats, but uh, JFK was sauntering around just in his suit and tie. What nobody knew was he was also wearing a full thermal bodysuit underneath his suit. Now, to give you, give you, here's a short clip of the, of the historic debate. Uh, uh, where Kennedy looks the image of youth and health, while Nixon appears both nervous and ill with beads of sweat on his forehead and upper lip due to his decision not to wear makeup. In 1933, Franklin Roosevelt said in his inaugural that this generation of Americans has a rendezvous with destiny. I think our generation of Americans has the same rendezvous. The question now is, can freedom be maintained under the most severe attack, attack it has ever known? I think it can be. And I think in the final analysis, it depends upon what we do here. I think it's time America started moving again. And now the opening statement by Vice President Richard M. Nixon. I costed out the cost of the Democratic platform. It runs a minimum of 13 and two pence billion dollars a year more than we are presently spending to a maximum of 18 billion dollars a year more than we're presently spending. Now, the Republican platform will cost more, too. It will cost a minimum of $4 billion a year more, a maximum of four and nine tenths billion billion a year more than we're presently spending. What's interesting now, is that after the debate, the people who were canvassed, well, those who had watched it on television, well, they said that Kennedy just ran away with it. But the people who listened to it on the radio, well, they thought that Nixon had come out ahead. The eventual result was one of the closest in the history uh, with Kennedy winning 49.7% of the vote to Nixon's 49.55. But aside from the, the television debate, there was the small issue of JFK's dad, Joe, who it's rumoured pulled in favours from the mafia to get his son over the line. This was the same mafia who were understandably miffed uh, when Joe's other son, Robert, Kennedy, uh, once appointed uh, Attorney General by his brother, well, he, he initiated a campaign against him. Some have even suggested that this may have resulted in the subsequent assassination of both JFK and his brother Robert. But that's a rabbit hole I have neither the time nor intention to drop into right now. <clears throat> and while some voyeurs uh, have always obsessed on the private lives of the Kennedy brothers, nobody can destroy their political legacy. JFK faced down Khrushchev during the Cuban Missile Crisis and Robert Kennedy spent years in the Senate working for the poor and disadvantaged. Indeed, as a senator, Robert was unwilling to rely on reports, preferring to go and see conditions on the ground for the poor and dispossessed within America in the 1960s. He visited slums from Harlem and New York to the Appalachian Hills. <clears throat> Indeed, arriving home after one such trip, rather demoralized and tired, he uncharacteristically, sitting at the, at the Kennedy dinner table, banged his fist off the table and admonished all his children gathered round that they should spend their lives trying to alleviate such suffering. That his son and namesake, Robert Kennedy Jr., recently ended his own run for the presidency and threw his support behind the Trump campaign, beggars belief and only adds to the surreal nature of this campaign. Also surreal was the fact that a sitting president in the shape of Joe Biden was forced from running for a second term due to his age. Now, I highlighted Joe Biden's difficulties during my tour last year when, when I said this. Now, again, a language warning as this is uncensored stand-up. So, we're in political miasma, nothing happening. And one of the biggest events had to be, had to be, 
the visit of Joe Biden. The Irish boy came home. Joe came home, right? And there's eternal credit, because you know every MLA here was buying the new suit. <laughs> they were getting their hair done for the picture with Joe. And Joe went, get the fuck, right? <laughs> and he went down and he opened the university. But as Joe got off the plane, here, you think of the number of politicians we have here, political commentators, journalists, and academics. Who do you think Channel 4 News asked on to comment about the visit of the president? Fucking me! <laughs> ah, fuck. Somebody fucked up the phone number somewhere. Oh, I'll do it. Oh, fucking right, I'll do it, no problem. That's a wee girl called Margaret Gibney. Me and her went down, lovely woman. So we went down to the Titanic Center. This shit, this never phases me, all. any of this stuff never phases me. I'll explain why that is later on. But I didn't get nervous. So what I think was going to happen was be a segment. What to do, the film a segment, and then they send it over to London, and then they edit it up, and then they put it out on the Channel 4 News at seven o'clock. I arrived down, right? <laughs> and Matt Fry goes to me, you do know, Jake, you do know this is going out live tonight. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> And my head goes, don't say fuck, 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 don't say fuck. Don't call anybody a wanker, don't call anybody a wanker, don't call. I was very good, I was very good. The only way I pushed it a wee bit, the only thing I said was, I hoped they didn't make a Joe jog when he was over here. <laughs> Joe's 81 years old. They make Joe jog everywhere. This is some mad dog political strategist way back who decided Joe's too old, we have to make him look virile. So they make him jog, 81. And I found the first ever clip of this mad dog shite. It was when he was vice president under Obama, and this is the first time Joe done the jogging, right? Now, when you watch this short clip, I want you to notice how many cuts there are in this clip. Because every time there's a cut, cut, Joe's getting fucking oxygen, do you understand? <laughs> so here we go. Cut, 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 two dogs going, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> cut, cut, cut. All he does is run out down a corridor, goes round, goes outside, goes back up the outside of the same corridor, and very And he does it. They say to Joe, jump. This one I love, because usually they measure it out, right? Somebody fucked up here. Somebody didn't measure it out, right? Because right? Joe's doing the run into the lectern shite, but they put too long a distance in. And you can actually see Joe here lose his shit right at the end, okay? Because here he goes, yep, 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 there you go. Hi, hi, hi! It should be stopping now, I should be stopping now. Oh fuck, oh fuck, fuck, fuck! Run, you bastard, run! Mad dog shape. I don't want a man who can run, I want a man who can think. Do you understand? And was always going to end badly. Do you know what I mean? Like, they do, they do tricks on our Joe. They put escalators on our Force One and didn't fucking tell him. <laughs> they put extra steps in when he's and they don't fucking take the fuck. This one I love. The president's on a bike. How virile. Oh my God, the president looks so virile. Look how virile. Oh, for fuck's sake. 10, 12, 15. Oops, stepping on him. That's black, anyway. What I said was I didn't want Joe jogging when he was over here. Because the grass is still wet here when he was over here. And we've had the grassy knoll in Dallas. I don't want the fucking grassy banks of Belfast. <laughs> so Joe, 